This is an extra help video for simplifying radicals when the radicand has a factor that is a perfect square. We need to remember that the radical is this symbol and the radicand is the number or variables inside. So we're talking about when the number or variables in our square root symbol has a factor that is a perfect square. We've memorized the perfect squares of 1 through 20. So we're looking for factors underneath our radical, such as 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, etc., because we know the square roots of those numbers. There are two other important things to remember. The first is that the square root of a times b can be split into the square root of a times the square root of b. So for example, the square root of 8 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. The second important thing to remember is the quotient property, that the square root of a over b can be split into the square root of a over the square root of b, as long as both a and b are positive. So we'll keep all of these facts in mind, and I'm going to do the first view on homework number 2 with you. Homework number two, simplifying square roots. Let's zoom in and we'll do the first few together. So, the first one says we want the square root of 12. So I want to keep my chart of perfect squares handy, and luckily you have one in your ISN. And I want to know, is 12 a perfect square? It's not, because it's not on my list. So then I'd say, well is 12 divisible by 4, or 9, or 16, etc. And I would choose reasonable ones to try. I know that 12 is the same thing as 4 times 3, so I'm going to rewrite it as the square root of 4 times 3 and split it. So I have the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Since I know how to do the square root of 4, I can write that part as 2 because that's a perfect square. So I have 2 root 3. I double check that my radicand that's still in existence, or the square root of 3, does not have any factors that are perfect squares, and since it doesn't, this is my final answer. Now let's look at number two. Number two says the square root of 35. Well, the factors of 35 are 7 and 5, and neither 7 nor 5 are over here on my list. So it's not that 35 is prime, because I've heard some of you say that. It's that 35 does not have any factors or no numbers multiply together to be 35 that are perfect squares. So this is already simplified, and that's all I write. Simplified. Number three says the square root of 128. So 128 is not on my list of perfect squares, and so I'm going to have to see what is the biggest perfect square that is a factor of 128. There's a few ways to approach this problem. One is to see what numbers that are on my list of perfect squares, such as 9, 16, 25, etc., could possibly be factors of 128 and choose the biggest one. So 128 divided by, let's even start close to 128. Well, 128 is clearly not divisible by 121. It's not divisible by 100. It's not divisible by 81, because 81 times 2 is bigger than 128. So my next would be 64. So we could try right away and see, well, is 128 divided by 64? And as it turns out, it is. So we know that we have the square root of 64, oops, 64 times 2, which we can break apart to the square root of 64 times the square root of 2, and this is 8 root 2. However, we may not want to always do all of the division out, or we may have trouble doing the division of large numbers, because it may not be as easy as 128 divided by 2 to get 64. So sometimes you may say, well, I know that 128 is divisible by 4, for instance, because 12 is divisible by 4, and 8 is divisible by 4. So we have 4 times what? 32. So we know already that we could rewrite this as 2 root 32 because we have the square root of 4 times 32 
and we could pull out the 2, which is the square root of 4. So let's break this down even further. 32, I know some factors of 32. I know that 32 is 16 times 2. So right away I can say, well, we have two options from here. I could write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. And I would be able to pull out my square root of 4, so I'd have a 2, and pull out my square root of 16, which would be 2 times 4 times the square root of 2, because I haven't done anything with my 2 on the inside yet. Or I could say, well, wait, just from this step here, I know what 4 times 16 is. If they are both perfect squares, then that means that their product must be perfect squares. So I'll rewrite that as 64 times 2, which is exactly what I had on the right. All of these different methods will help you reach your answer of 8 root 2. I know it may seem overwhelming, but I promise that you will get the hang of it. Some of these are a lot faster than others. For example, if we see the square root of negative 16, we know that that will be no real numbers. For some of them later on, you may have to do multiple steps. So for example, if we look at number 8, we have the square root of 60 over 4. So you need to figure out what is the largest perfect square that goes into 60 evenly, and you can use that to break down the problem, but then you will have to simplify it with the 4. The last one I'm going to do with you is number 9. So number 9 says the square root of 9 over the square root of 144. I'm going to break this apart to be the square root of 9 over the square root of 144. I could have simplified 9 over 144, but it's easier to do it this way because I see that both 9 and 144 are perfect squares. So in the numerator, I get 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. And in the denominator, I get, 140, I get 12, because 12 times 12 is 144. This gives me the answer of 1 fourth, because I simplify it. If you decided to simplify first, then you would have gotten the square root of... 1 over 16, because 9 actually goes into both of those evenly. And we're saying, well, what number times itself equals 1 over 16? That number is 1 fourth, which is what we got over here. And you would probably reach that over on the right-hand side by doing the square root of 1 over the square root of 16, and you would reach your same answer. I hope this helps. To summarize, we went over four cases in class. One case is when we already have a radicand that is a perfect square. In that case, we can just find the square root of the number. For example, the square root of 25 would be 5, and we can do simplification after that. The second case is where we have to break down whatever our number inside the radical is, and I want to say what perfect square is our radicand divisible by. Some may be easier for you to see than others, for example, 50 is 25 times 2, so we know that the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 2, we just keep like that. Others may be trickier, so you may need to use multiple steps to break them down. A third case is where we have the, the square root of a number that does not have any factors that, is, that are perfect squares. For example, the square root of 13 in which case we just leave it like that and say that it's simplified. And the final case is if we have the square root of a negative number, which we know is impossible, so we write all real numbers. I hope this helped a little. We'll go over it more in class on Monday. Don't forget to memorize your perfect squares and cubes.